Hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Hola, 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 y como estas? Muy bien, muy bien. Y espero que tú también. Hello, Orange Room friends. Hello to Anne and to Reina in our morning class and to Linda and Maria in the afternoon class. And hello to Vicky and Sadie and Livia and Lucy and Micah and Maeve and Madison and Caitlin and Henry and Eva and Iman and Desmond and Ben and Ariane and Ari in our afternoon class. And hello to William and Seamus and Santiago and Mariana and Kareem and Nora and Nick and Maya and Juliana and Jet and Jasper and Alan and Emily and Clara and Carolyn and Bella in our morning class. I sure do miss you guys. It's, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen you. So we are going to get to our calendar. And it is the month of May. And yesterday was Wednesday, May 13th. So we need to find out what comes after Wednesday and what comes after 13. So let's sing our song. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Who raised your hands on, on Thursday, right? All right. Now what comes after 13? Well, what comes after 3? 4 comes after 3. 13, 14. All right, we're going to check if we're right after we figure out our pattern. So this is, has six parts, remember? Green square, pink square, orange square, green triangle, pink triangle, orange triangle. Green square, pink square, orange square, green triangle, pink triangle, orange triangle. Green square. So what comes after green square? So it's green, pink, orange, green, pink, orange. Green, pink, orange. Green, pink, orange. Green. I bet it's pink. So it's, and then it's square, 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 triangle, triangle, triangle. Square, 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 triangle, triangle, triangle. Square. Do you think it's a, a, a pink square? Let's check. Let's see. Ooh, orange, your friends. It is a, whoop. Pink square. Let me get some more tape here. It's not sticking. Um, it is Thursday, May 14th, and it is a pink square. Now, I want to tell you some very cool things about what's happening in the next few days. This is the last day of our Cherry Preschool Week. However, in two or three sleeps, some very exciting things are happening. Nick is having a birthday in our morning class, and we want to say happy birthday, Nick. That's very exciting. And Nick, we are hoping that you um, can tell us if you have a special treat or you do anything like a special activity that day for your birthday. So today is the 14th. So how many days until Nick's birthday on the 16th? Let's see, 14, or how many sleeps? 15... 16. We're going to put the calendar because we put a star up there for Nick for his birthday. So happy birthday to Nick. And so today is Thursday the 14th. So one, one sleep and it'll be the 15th. Two sleeps until Nick's birthday. And then we have another birthday. On the 17th, on the very next day, Desmond in our afternoon class is having, having a birthday. So very special happy birthday to Desmond. And we put a star on there for you too, Desmond. So today is the 14th, so we have, we have to sleep Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Three sleeps until Desmond's birthday. So happy birthday to you. And if you could also let us know what you do for an activity that day, or if you have a special treat, we'd love to hear from you. So, Orange and Friends, I'm going to move into our mystery bag. What's in the mystery bag? Who can tell? Maybe a bucket, maybe a bell. What's in the mystery bag? We can't see. It's a surprise for you and me. All right, clue number one. It's a rectangle. See, it's a rectangle. <laughs> oh, is it hard or soft? That sounds kind of hard to me. See? Hard. 
hard rectangle. Well, I mean, it could be a brick. I don't think it's a brick. All right, clue number two. Oh, it opens. It's a rectangle and it opens. Well, books are rectangles that open, but it's not a book. So clue number three is it holds shoes. Okay, so it's a rectangle. It opens and it holds shoes. Oh, what do you think it is? Do you have any guesses? Let's look. Let's see if you're right. Oh, orange and friends. It's a shoe box. See, it opens. And I got some shoes that came in. So, hold that thought for now about the shoe box. We'll come back to that. <clears throat> I'm going to read you a story. This is called The Three Little Pigs. And it is uh, written and illustrated by Stephen Gua Gua Guarnaccia. And some of you may have read this. This is an architectural tale. You may have read The Three Little Pigs and you may have read this one. There's lots of versions of this story. An architectural tale. An architect is someone who builds things, uh, buildings or houses. And you guys were architects in the in the orange room when you made your houses and we designed uh, our cities of Cherrytown and Cherrytown and Orange. Boy, maybe somebody's going to have to send me a, a note and remind me what the name of our other town was. So, all right, and in, the, in this book, in the front, when you open the front of the book, there's really interesting pictures of real houses that a real architect designed and real furniture pieces that real architects designed. And on the back cover too, so all of these pictures that you see on the front and back cover of this book appear in this story somewhere. So let's see what this says. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who lived in a big house in the forest. One day, the three pigs said goodbye to their mother and went off to make their way in the world. The first little pig decided to build his house of scraps. See, he's got his, all his tools and his blueprints. We made blueprints. The second little pig decided to build his house of glass. Hmm. But the third little pig decided to build his house of stone and concrete. Now there was an evil wolf who lived in the woods nearby. One day he came to the house of the first little pig and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. But the pig answers, Not by the air, by chinny chin chin. This made the wolf so angry that he said, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. The wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house of scraps away. I don't think that house was very sturdy to you. The first little pig ran as fast as he could to the house of his brother. Soon the wolf came to the house of the second little pig and the wolf called out, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the second pig answered, not by the air, my chinny chin chin. The wolf gnashed his tooth and said, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And the wolf huffed and puffed and he blew the house of glass to smithereens. So the two little pigs ran as fast as their legs would take them to the house of their brother. Finally, the wolf arrived at the house of the third little pig. The wolf growled at the door, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. But the third little pig replied, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. This enraged the evil wolf, who roared, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but he couldn't budge the house of stone and concrete. Those are very strong materials, aren't they? The wolf said, Little pig, meet me tomorrow morning at 7 a.m at Farmer Wright, and I'll show you a fine tomato greenhouse. Do you think the wolf's trying to trick him? But the pig awoke at six, 
that's before, and picked the best tomatoes in the greenhouse and was home slicing them for lunch by the time the wolf arrived. I'll get you let yet, said the wolf under his breath. That pig's pretty smart. He's tricking up. The wolf returned to the third pig's house and said, Little pig, meet me tomorrow at six at Farmer Johnson's and I'll show you an orchard full of tasty apples. The next morning at five, which is before six, the pig was picking the best apples in Farmer Johnson's orchard when along came the wolf. Good, aren't they? said the wolf. They certainly are, said the pig. Here, try one. And as the wolf chased the apple, the third pig ran home to his house as of stone and concrete. So he threw him, and the wolf went chasing him, and he got away. He, he was, had time to run away. He's very smart. That evening, the wolf went back to the third little pig's house and said, I'll meet you at Frank's flea market tomorrow morning at five. So the pig arrived at four, which is before five, and he was admiring a fine rug when he saw the wolf approaching. He hid himself in the rug and rolled down the hill toward the wolf. The wolf sped away with the rug following after him. The third pig returned home, where he and his brothers prepared a roaring fire in the fireplace and settled in for the evening. Tricked again, the wolf rushed to the third pig's house, saying under his breath, Little pigs, I'll get you yet. The wolf climbed onto the roof and shouted down the chimney, I'm coming in to get you. But the wolf tumbled into the roaring fire, scorching his tail. Oh, look at that. The wolf ran from the house, smoke streaming after him, and he was never seen in the forest again. The three little pigs ate a supper of tomato soup and apple pie, and they lived happily ever after. That's such a silly story. <clears throat> All right. So, Orange Room friends, I want to pause for one second. I'm going to sign in on my sign-in sheet. I don't think I did that. So, I've got, I've started another piece of paper, and I'm going to hold my pen like this. And you could use a crayon or a piece of chalk or a marker or anything you want and to practice writing your name or as many letters as you know. And so, I just keep practicing writing my name. All right, and now I want to get back to that shoe box. I thought that we could make uh, a stage play. Have you ever been to a stage play where you go and you sit in a chair with a lot of other people and there's a, a, a big area in front that's up a little bit higher and people come out and do a, a tell you a story in that big area up front. Uh, that's called a stage. And so I thought we could turn this shoebox into a stage, like this. So it opens like this. If you turn it up like this, this could be our stage, and this could be the backdrop of our stage. And then, if you put a little cut, a little slip in right here, your characters can be, see my finger? They come up from the bottom of the stage, and you can be behind it, working it, and putting your hand up, your characters up in there. And I'm going to show you how we make that. So first of all, now if I don't have to make it with this up either. I can just use, I can just open the box and work here. I don't have to have a backdrop. And you could use a different kind of box if you wanted to too. <clears throat> but I decided to make a backdrop. And I took some some white paper and I cut it because I didn't want this showing. So I'm going to cut it on my backdrop like this. I ended up with a piece of paper that looked like this. I'm just going to attach it right there. So then it's a little more covered because I'm going to, I decided that I'm going to do a play of the three little pigs. You can do any story you want. You can write your own story. You can do a book. You could do a movie that you saw. And you could design this any way you want. So for my story, I'm doing the three little pigs so that you know my story as I, as I do this. And so I made some houses and I just took some, oh, I made some a pigs and a wolf and some houses. And so I just cut them out. And so I cut out that first house of scraps like this. 
and I cut it so it kind of looked all thrown together and there's a little little door right there. And I just taped on some green paper onto that and I'm going to put this house right here and I just I'm taping it on to this this background and then I used a different kind of paper and this is my house of glass and it has and I actually use graph paper for this um, to make it look a little different and then I put a door and some interesting windows. I made, it, I made it any way I could. And I'm going to stick that piece of paper right there. And then I cut uh, another piece of paper and I cut it so the, the roof was attached and I colored the roof and I just colored some windows and a door right there and I put some tape on the back like the others. And that's going to be my third house. All right. Now, I showed you I cut this slit here earlier, but I'm going to cut another slit because then I can have lots of people in, or lots of different characters moving in these rows or whatever I want. It could be trees moving or something like that. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to poke into here like this. And you might need a grown-up to help you with this part. You can do the rest yourself. And I'm going to cut down like this. And then I'm going to cut a little this way and a little this way. And cut and, uh, oops, put some more, and I'm just gonna cut a strip out of this box so that my characters can come up to the bottom of the stage. This is the stage floor. So I have this this oh okay. So it came out. So I have a strip that I pulled out like that of the box. And now I have two the slits right here. And now I want, I took, this is, my backdrop isn't going to stay up. So I took a piece of tape and I taped it along here. And so it was really long like this. And I'm going to do another one actually because it's not going to stay anymore. So I'm going to take a long piece of tape and I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to anchor it. So I want to put it on the front of the box and up along piece of tape off because it's not working anymore. Alright, so I'm just going to put this piece of tape along the box like this and then I'm going to hold this where I want it to stay and then I'm going to tape it along the back. So now it should stay up. It's like a support is taping all around like that. Alright? So then I have all this little area in the back. And um, I cut out some piggies. Um, and I, I, took a, I just took a little pink piece of paper and I drew sort of a sketch of what to cut out. And, uh, and it looked like this. This is my one piggy. And I gave him some orange suspenders. And he's going to be, I gave him orange so I know which piggy goes with my, uh, which house. And so I just drew a little face on and cut him out and then he can go up in here like this and then um, I drew another piggy and I gave this piggy a bow tie like that after I cut him out and oh and so I put I taped one I had a pencil you tape it to anything you want um, I taped this one to a pencil I taped this one to a stick in the back and so they just can sit right in there like that. And then um, I did another one, and this one has bows right up there. And um, this this piggy can go right up in here. And to go with the red house, it's red bows to go with the red house. So it's just in case I needed to tell my piggies apart, because they're all piggies. And then I made a wolf. And this was very hard for me to cut out and draw. Because I did, so I did the best I could. I used some paper and then I colored him in with some brown marker and I gave him a giant black eye. And so that is my, my wolf. And now my wolf, let's see, well my piggies are going to go on this back row. And my wolf is going to sit on the front row. So I actually only need one piggy at a time. So let's go with, I'm going to keep them down there. So, 
and then I can make my, my, my play and I can invite my family to watch my play or I can invite my stuffed animals or my imaginary friends to do my play. Um, and so I could stick the P up in this and I could say, here comes the big bad wolf who blows his house in. Puffs and puffs, he blows his house in, and the, and the house disappears, and he goes into the next person's house. And then the big bubble says, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. And he'll say, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Little huff, little puff, I'll blow your house in. And he huffs and he puffs, he blows his house in. Oh, and the piggy goes down. Oh no, runs away to his brother's house. And then he goes to the third piggy's house and he says, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Oh, and he doesn't. And you can go on and on with the story, whatever kind of story you want to do. Now, another thing you could do is um, if you wanted to do something different, you could use. So, this is just a cereal box that I cut out in the back. I actually cut the whole thing off in the back for another project. Um, and so I'm just using this so that I can work underneath here. So I made a little piggy as an example, and then I just folded the bottom of this piggy's right here so that he could sort of stand up on this, this stage. Let's see if I can tip this down a little bit more so you can see. Okay, so if this piggy can stand up on the stage like this, and he can be a character with that flying all over the place. This is not a flying pig show. Here we go. Okay, so he's standing up like that. And if I take, this is a paper clip, right? And this is a magnet. Now what's going to happen? Is the magnet going to stick to the paper clip? Yep, they're attracted to each other, right? By that magnetic force. So if I put this paper clip on this bottom part that I folded over of the piggy, if I had a bunch of paper clips, I could put it on the bottom and I could put the paper clip here and then I could take the magnet part and I could go under the cereal box, which is pretty thin cardboard, and I could move. Can you see it? Let oh, me bring it closer to the, the screen here. I can move the piggy around with. Here, let me bring it up closer. The, the paper clip is attracted to the magnet, and I can move this piggy all around. And you could make a whole play of characters moving them around underneath. So that is another way to do it. I really recommend a strong magnet for this. I did not have a strong magnet in my house um, that would pull these paper clips really well. So that is another way to do it. So I hope you um, have some supplies in your house. You could use any box you want. You could cut out any design you want. You can make any story you want. You can write it yourself. You can use different materials like popsicle sticks and sticks from outside. You could use markers or anything to hold them up and to cut into your box. And you don't need a backdrop. You just need a flat surface that you can stick them up through. So, um, that's what I have for you. So I hope you have a, a wonderful afternoon, and I will see you again next time. Bye, Orange and Friends.